Hello gamers, it's SoftKitty99 and today we're back in the Minecraft Creative Builds world. In the last episode we did the library, which is right next door to the building we're going to be tackling today. Now in structures, this is actually a butcher's shop that generates randomly in the villagers. Uh, but if you remember, right at the beginning of this series of redoing the village, we did a butcher's shop at the far end of the village. So what I thought we'd do with this one, which is one that I've built myself to add to the village, is turn this butcher's shop design into a village pub. And I think we'll put like a little beer garden in the back where we've got the animal pen. We'll extend that and make a little garden with some tables for seating for the pub. And I think we'll also go up and make a second story so they've got more seating for the pub. Because downstairs we'll be lucky if we can get more than the one table that's already in there. So we definitely need more seating space. So we'll go upstairs and we'll make a great big beer garden. So we just cleared a few trees out of the way and extended the flat floor print at the back of the property for the garden to fit into. We're going to need to move the fencing to make it a little bigger. So I think we'll have the garden the full width of the building at the back here. And we'll use the crimson fence to be in keeping with the colour scheme that we've used throughout the rest of the build. And we'll put in a couple of gates quite close to the building for access so you don't have to go through the pub every time you want to get into or out of the garden. And then I think I've moved enough of the ground to make this pretty close to the edge of the building. I think we'll put a tiny extension right there to the end of the building and we'll grab some gates. Well, I haven't got the gates, let's grab the gates. Now we could put the crimson ones in, but I think I'm going to put the oak in so that it's very clear and easy to see where the gates are. So we'll put one at that side and one at this side. So you can exit or enter the garden to either side around the sides of the building. Let's change the step from the cobblestone to the crimson wood. Let's put that in place of the gate. There we go. And let's do that at the front of the building as well so that they match. Lovely. We want this entryway to be a little bit prettier, a little bit more ornate. If we use the upside down stairs at the bottom and then knock out where the roof is and put the crimson wood in at the top and then use the fence to up and down to join that together we'll create ourselves a little porch way. So it's just a basic design using stairs and fencing and we will do the same at the back. So we want to grab the stairs, put them upside down at either side of the step, remove the spaces in the roof and put that across with the stair. Join the two stairs top to bottom using the fence posts and it's just a nice, simple little design, but it just makes the whole entrance area much more ornate. A nice, simple little trick to make a pretty entranceway. I do think we want something a little bit different in the middle there. So how about if we put the step upside down like that? Yeah, see that looks just so much better just by that tiny change. So let's do that on the front as well. Let's put an upside down step there. There we go, lovely. Right, so we'll just remove the roofing now because I said we want to go up by an extra story, so we'll do that. And that will also make the entranceway stand out more because it's not now connected to the actual roof structure. So we'll remove all the stair blocks first and then we'll remove some of the extra wood that's underneath that as we go. And then we'll add in another story. So we'll clear all this out first. Nearly there. And 
just a few along the edge. Make sure you don't take out your little door structure there. There we go, pretty. Right, we've still got a few bits of tree lurking around. There we go, all clear now. So that looks a little odd at the moment, but we're now going to take it up. And we're going to keep using the same materials that we've already got inside. Oops, we've got a few errant things floating around inside. Let's remove those. So we've got like the bar area here. I think we'll keep the stone for the bar area itself and just behind it and we will extend the wood just to make that a little bit neater so now you've got your little bar area in from the counter area that would have been the butchers it would be nice to have a longer bar but if we wanted to do that we would have to actually make the whole um, building a lot bigger and I don't want to do that I want to keep it to the same footprint because the whole of this Minecraft village makeover is basically to do fairly small amounts of changing to the buildings but just to make it look prettier so we're not going to do a great big overhaul of every building and at the corners though I am going to swap that out for the wood we have done this on a couple of the other builds before I just think it adds a lot more depth and character to the buildings and then above the height of the walls that we've already got we're going to go up by an extra three so we remove the cobblestone at the corner, build up to the height of the walls we've currently got and then add one, two, three more blocks of height to add in the second story as we go. And we'll just do that on the final corner, come up to the height that we've already got and then one, two, three taller. Lovely. Then we're going to use cobblestone and wood planks on the sides of the building and we're going to keep them in character with what's below. So we want one row of cobblestone on the end, then we want two wood planks at the two sides and two panes of glass in the centre and then another row of cobblestone on top. So the two floors there you see match each other. Then we come round to the other side and do the same. So we start with a row of cobblestone then we grab our wooden planks and put one at each side of the wall, fill the two gap in the middle with the glass and then a row of cobblestone on top. Ta-da! Now for the front and back that's going to be a little bit different but we're also going to want to put on a roof so we want to use the instep idea with the cobblestone so we go four blocks on the first row and then two in the centre on the top. To fit the roofing and then at the side here we want to do a row of cobblestone do that on the back as well a row of cobblestone then we're going to want to put windows in the next row I kind of want to keep them in the same position as the lower floor so we want two right above the lower window here and one above where the door is we could make it two, actually. I think it would fit quite nicely because then we can put one plank in the centre and one at each end. That actually might work really well. I think we want to do that on the front as well. And then a row of wood above that. There we go. Then we don't need to extend the roof any higher on this side, the front and the back, uh, because we're going to be sloping the roof up at the sides, which we've already made provision for on the edges. So a row of wood with three blocks of wood and then fill in the rest with the glass and then on top we want a full row of the wooden planks and then we're ready for the roof let's just give you a quick overview of the sides there and then to make the windows prettier we'll use the crimson wood trap doors at the sides of all of the windows so we want to go all the way around the build there like that Oh, you wants to see what we're doing. Iron Golem's feeling all protective about his village that we keep messing about around him. Poor guy. I think we're nearly there now. Just one more side. Ta -da. See, just adding trapdoors is quite a small thing but it does make quite a big difference to the look of the build and with the different designs of trapdoors available now you can make quite a lot of different looks oops can't see there we go let's just go around and show you them it looks like a completely different building to me I think when we've not done that much to it so we could add some plants or we could add a roof 
I think the roof is the most sensible thing. We're going to use four planks on this one. We have done that on some of the builds. So we're going to use the crimson wood all the way along the edge of the build. And then we want to do the same on the back. So right above the windows, all the way along the edge of the building, like so. Then we want to swap to the oak planks. And we want to build on top of the wall for the second row. And then up again. And then let's do the same on the opposite side of the building. So we're following the line of the roof that we created at the end here. And then we want to add one of the redwood at the end of each of the oak plank sections. So that we're just edging the roof to add that little bit of colour. And then in the centre we want to use two strips of the oak plank all the way across. Oh, not on top of there, Kitty, just straight across. And then we want to add the crimson wood to the two ends just to finish off the roof. If I can grab the right block, there we go. One, two on that end and then two on the opposite end. And that is the outside of the actual building itself completed. And like I said, we're not overdoing the transformation of these buildings. I want them to be fairly simple changes, but just to make the whole village look prettier. I think we'll add some window boxes like we've done on a lot of the other buildings. Here, because we're going to put them on the ground, we're going to have a little bit more space up from the windows. So we could put one of the taller flowers in these. So we're going to make them double wide just under where the windows are. Use the crimson trapdoor to put a little box around the edges of the grass blocks. One on the other side there, like so. Let's go around and do the others. So we've got one at the front, do the two ends, and across the front. So it just looks like a lovely little planter box. Hello Mr Gollum, do you like what we're doing? And then we want a flower to go inside the boxes. I think we use one of the taller flowers. Maybe the rose bushes because of the colour. We could use the peonies or the lilacs and they're all quite pretty actually. It's just a personal preference as to which one you like to use in here. Um, no, not the lilac, the roses. I said roses. There we go. Number two, rose bushes. And put those in the window boxes. Splash of colour, make it all pretty. There we go. And a view for you. Now we could do the same in the window box underneath the window, but I don't know, I just think that might be. Is that just too much if we do it there? No, I think it will work because we did leave one gap. Oop, wrong place. We did leave one gap from the wall before we started the fence and the gate post. So I think it will fit okay. Can we get in there? Okay. Yeah, no, I think I've still got good access there. Now we wanted this to be a seating area, but also want it to be quite pretty. So I think we might put planters in. How about in the corners? If we just put one block in the corner and make that into a planter. Yeah? Let's fill it around the two sides here that are not next to the fence with the trapdoors. So the actual fence itself forms the other two sides of the little box. Lovely! And then we can put a little seat in the middle at the back there. Too wide maybe? Um, and then we're going to want something for tables. I mean, for seating, you could use the crimson wood, but I think we're going to use the oak wood because I don't want the crimson to over dominate. 
and we'll grab the oak fence also for the base of the table and then for the top of the table you can either use the trapdoors I think I'm going to use the crimson wood trapdoor and if you don't like the texture of the wood you could use a piece of carpet in your preferred colouring because both of those work quite well so either the pressure plates or the pieces of carpet I think would work really great for tabletops So in the centre there, I think we can put a two wide bench for sitting on. And then in front of that, we want a two wide table. And then we can put the pressure plates on the top there, or carpet if you prefer that. And then we want the stairs, so we're going to have to go on top. You can hear them clicking if you stand on them because the pressure plates and then we'll put a two wire bench there so you've got the big table at the back of the garden there near the planters and then depending on the amount of space you've got to work you can fit in your tables I think we could put seats around the edge of a table yeah there we go move one just because it wasn't quite in the right spot now we can't put a big table over here but we can put a two person table uh, and then we can do that again we can put another two person table at this side and then fit one of the larger tables again over here so we've four seats around a small table there we go and I think that's plenty of seating for in the little garden and as I say, you just tailor make the seating arrangement based on the space that you've actually got for your little beer garden in the back. And we build our little tables for each of our sets of seating. And we're done. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Nice and simple. And there's the overview so you can see the layout that I've gone for. And like I say, you just tailor make the seating to fit into the space that you've got behind your building depending on how the terrain's worked out for you and you can make the garden any size that you would like so that's the outside of the building completed now let's try and give you some views so you can see everything that we've done to it in case you missed anything as we were going through and then I think we'll go inside and do a little bit of work in there. We need to put in our second story and some way to access there. I think in the corner here we'll remove that block and we'll add a seat so we can kind of make a little booth here and we'll put the pressure plate colour of our choosing on for the table. We don't want to put anything else on in the corner there because we'll block access to the door. I would like to actually put stairs but I'm not quite sure how they fit. Yeah, we definitely can't fit another table there. There really isn't a lot of space down here to add more tables. I'm just trying to figure out how to make this work. If we make this a proper little booth enclosed on three sides, that gives us a little bit more seating here and it still gives us enough access to get out to the back door and through to the little bar area. Yeah, we definitely can't add anything else there. I think we might have to settle for just the one table downstairs, to be honest, because I really do want to put an upstairs in here. I mean, you could put in a little ladder in one of the corners, but I really think we want to put in some stairs, and I can't see a way to put it in the corner, so I suspect it's going to have to go over the doorway maybe run along here and up above the door I don't think we could put it the opposite way going above the bar can we no that's I don't think that's going to fit is it I mean it might work going that way but I think maybe the opposite direction will work better so we want it to sit above the stairs so it would start here And then where does the flooring want to go? It wants to go one block 
one full block below the windows, doesn't it? So we want to use a half slab so that we leave more head height in the bottom storey. So I think the floor wants to go there, one full block below the windows. So we're going to need to move the torches downstairs because the roof, um, the flooring here is going to be in the way of where the torches are now, so we'll have to move them down downstairs. In fact, let's pick a torch up from that final one and move them down a little bit. So we'll leave some lighting in there. Let's go down and put the lighting back in over this side. So we'll put it next to the windows downstairs. And then we'll put some upstairs as well. we'll put it next to the windows. Or we could go higher up here, actually. There we go. We'll put it slightly higher up upstairs so that it lights the roof space as well. And then we finished putting in the flooring for the second storey here. And then this will give us a little bit more space for some more interior tables. Now we need to make sure that we... Uh, let's go up and down and see if we need to... Yes, we need to knock one of those out. Yep, now we can get up and down. That's good. So now we look at the space that we've got upstairs. Yep, we can still get in and out of the building. Right, let's go up here. So now we know which space we've got to work with, we can decide how many tables we can fit in. So I think we can put a two-person table here, right at the end near the window here. Mm, that's not going to work, putting in an extra table at the end like that. So we have to rethink that one. I was thinking we could put one table at the end and then one just in the corner. So they kind of dovetail together, but that will just go wrong because of the way the seating works. And we'll place that piece of fence there just to stop people falling down off the uh, edges of that seat at the front there. Safety conscious. Yeah, so that'll stop you falling down the stairs. Good. Now, how am I going to make this seating work? I mean, we don't have a ton of space, but we can make a little bit of extra space. How about if we make a two wide table? And then we put another seat there. And then... We can put another table here. And then another one at the end. Or will that block the corner a little bit? That might block the corner. If we put one a table right in the corner and just put seating around it like that, we can get ourselves three two-person tables up here. Yep, let's put in our little pressure plates. There we go. So we've got a little bit of extra seating inside. There we go. And I think that that there completes the makeover from a little single-storey butcher shop into a two-storey with, two with beer garden, little inn or village pub. And I think that that fits in quite well with the rest of the village that we've built. So I'm just going to slowly go around the build, give you lots of different angles to take a look at it. And I hope that you've enjoyed today's episode. Please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And I will see you in the next one. From SoftKitty99, goodbye and happy games!